all right hello and welcome to this build guide for the smite smite shield throw the smite shield throw uh paladin so this is taking the shield throw build and kind of maximizing what it can do right now minimizing the downsides and coming up with a very good build especially in clear and defense so we're going to use shield throw to apply smites and also build us a ton of armor and uh, become very tanky and also like i said do lots of clear and kill things with smite and then we're um we're maximizing smite through devotion which gives us added spell damage per missing mana so we're also going to scale our mana high and then burn it down to get lots of added damage this build also does use bastion of honor like just about any block build does right now so it's going to have a lot of tankiness from that alone and yeah this is a pretty hard uh build to kill and it's also going to get a lot of healing and additional damage from javelin which is a fairly unusual choice um, for a lot of these builds but works really well on this one is definitely in my opinion the best choice even better than volatile reversal all right let's go ahead and get into the pros and cons has great clear it's a lot faster clear than for example smite hammer uh, hammer throw which is a you know fairly similar stylistic build but this one just can hit the enemies quicker and therefore proc smite faster than it can so it's got that as an advantage over smite hammer and smite hammer has a lot more single target though so that's got where its advantages this is also tankier than even the smite hammer throw one because of the armor scaling on it it's not a massive difference but it's a, a noticeable difference it's an iconic play style since it's shield throw shield throw has been around a long time in arpgs and it's a fun uh fun concept and this is no different it has absolutely excellent sustain through both leech and through the heals it's going to get from both the javelin and from um smite uh smite heals the downsides it's mana management it's going to have to be it's uh if it's a uh, devotion build because you have to burn down your mana and then make sure you maintain enough to do your abilities as you need to but it's not really too hard it's still something to consider it has heavy buff management like almost every sentinel build right now because it uses sigils of hope it uses um holy aura this one in particular uses javelin which is kind of like a buff um depending on how you look at it it has low single target damage compared to most of the build guides on max roll that doesn't mean it's got bad single target damage but compared to our typical stuff this one's on the lower side it just doesn't get to uh proc smite as much as a lot of the other like as not a lot like for example hammer throw which has a lot of really good single target because it can smite uh, can proc it so much it gets three hits a hammer throw gets three hits per attack and then can hit again on it's coming back around this one's just one you know it, just, it hits it hits it hits yes it can um it can ricochet but on bosses that's kind of a kind of a wasted effect we do buff it up with javelin which can also proc guaranteed smite so that benefits it but that also means we're not getting the 60 percent increased damage or more damage kind of like the 60 percent damage that we'd get from vault to reversal in this scenario which is a very powerful buff we're taking this instead all that is to say that's going to be less single target damage than something like smite hammer throw but it's still very reasonable single target damage and it makes up for it in clear and tankiness it is vulnerable to dot damage like most sentinel builds but it's an honestly less vulnerable than others because of javelin and it's consistent heal as long as you're standing in that it's hard to die from a dot but if you're not in javelin's aura it's banner aura you can die from this build uh with dots die in this build with dots okay let's move on to skills and passives so the first skill of course is shield throw and we are not building shield throw to do damage itself we are building shield throw to apply smites so that means we want to set it up to have no uh, cooldown have no mana cost and we are also setting it up to give us lots and lots of armor on ricochet so that we are much tankier we're also taking eruption which gives us lava burst this is not for the damage this is purely for the ailment up applicators application that it can do particularly in particular things like uh, a shred it can do quite it can do that quite quickly uh, and then we'll take fleet of foot which gives us haste just makes it easier to move out of things and move reposition yourself uh, sigils of hope is a primarily defense but also does offer offense in this scenario we do get 
80% increased damage from it, so that's pretty sizable, but we're getting Iron Sigils for the Endurance Threshold, which is really good for dots and just generic our general damage. We're getting lots of block chance here, even though we're wearing Bastion, that's still very effective. And then we are taking Word of Alacrity, which allows us to burn our mana quickly because Sigils is going to be how we burn our mana. So we're going to be able to burn it very quickly by just hitting Sigils multiple times and then having a lot more added damage from Devotion. Smite is the uh, damage star of the show here. We are building it for Lightning. We are building it also to Chain so that it's even better on Clear. Uh, Sacrifice is the biggest damage buff in here. And Atonement is being used to negate the, ne the negative effects of Sacrifice. And then we are crit capping thanks to Conviction. Javelin here is the unusual play in a, a build kind of, of this style. But it, it, it is better, I believe, than Volatile Reversal. It gets, uh, we can, excuse me, we can, we do cast Smite every 1.6 seconds. But actually increase that to 0.8 seconds thanks to R Righteous Descend. Uh, we don't care about the base crit here because we're already going to be crit capped. On top of that, we do get damage per attunement and endurance threshold per attunement. This isn't a huge endure and, and oh, excuse me, a, a huge attunement scaler, so it's not a big deal. But what is a big deal is this heal per second, which is affected by healing effectiveness, and we'll have a decent amount of that. And so this heal is going to be very strong and effectively can keep us alive on its own, but we'll also have leech on top of it, which is why this is such a good build for sustain. The last one in here is Holy Aura. This one is going to give us elemental resistance. It's going to give us damage. It's going to give us a lot more elemental resistance thanks to Shelter from the Storm. It's going to give us endurance, poison resistance, and it's going to give us throwing attack speed, which is very, very valuable. All right, that, uh, that is the skills. Let's talk about the passives. This is a pretty traditional Paladin setup. Armor clad, to always take that as Sentinel for the damage reduction. If you need resistances, we're going to use Juggernaut, Abyssal Endurance, Holy Icon, and Defiance to get those. Uh, we're going to take Gladiator, Seal, Aegis, Honor, and Shield Wall for additional block chance. Even though we are running Bastion, this will help us on ranged and it's four point total um, investment, so it's really easy. Reverence of Duality is an excellent, excellent node in Paladin, especially for this build that wants to build mana. Since it gives us 20% mana, 20% damage, 20% health, and the healing effect is great too. Since, again, we were talking about how we're using Javelins, this is 20% healing effectiveness as well. So this is like an insanely good node for this build. Maybe maybe the best use of this node that's already like pretty much mandatory for every Paladin build. Prayer Aegis or Light of Rare will be your last choice. I go with Light of Rhea for the damage, especially on this build and the move speed. But if you want additional um, defense, additional tankiness, you can go Prayer Aegis instead. All right, another note notable here, two more notables here. Heaven Fire for the additional added damage and Conviction for the Lightning Pen and Lightning Damage. But everything else in here is fairly standard fare. We do take things like Void Corruption for the little bit of crit multi. We already talked about Abyssal Endurance. Uh, we do need to take five points in the Forge Guard tree, though, to get Shield Throw. So that is one notable difference. Okay, gameplay. Skill usage rotation is going to feel very similar to like a Hammer Throw build or any other Shield Throw build. The, the big difference, if, you're play, if you've ever played a... Um, you ever played a Devotion build, the first thing you're going to do is burn your sigils or burn your mana through sigils until you're low so that you have maximum or high levels of added damage. Then you're going to spam shield throw at enemies. Uh, you can stand close to the maximized damage. You don't really need to do that actually with shield throw because it's going to proc anyway. Well, there is one reason to stand close because we are going to cast javelin and we want it to be on top of enemies and we want you to be in it. So you do want to stand close if you can, but not as important as it is for like the hammer throw build. But you do want to do it if you can for javelin. Uh, unspec shield rush and lunge to move around the around the map and then maintain your four sigils of hope uh, at all times keep your mana low use javelin and holy air uh, aura on top of enemies to get added damage and also heal yourself and you will be very difficult to kill and your clear will be very good for mapping rusty objective with unspec shield rush and or, or lunge excuse me proc the haste buff from expedite and holy aura if you can and then use that to shield rush even faster uh, you can take this vault reverse thing out because we're not using it. Group mobs before using Javelin and Holy Aura to maximize their buffs. Uh, again, stand in Javelin to maintain consistent healing. You're going to get so much from it. You're going to be kind of you're going to be kind of surprised, and then you're going to leech, and you're just you're just going to have instant health every time you get hit. 
And then for large groups, you can use shield throw while staying on the move. That 1.5 second haste buff that you get on shield throw will help you a lot uh, to maximize clear and to reduce your incoming damage. For bossing, do the same thing with your sigils. Burn your mana before you start the boss. Take advantage of your defensive buffs, keep them alive. Use holy aura to double your your uh, your damage or double your buffs from from your holy aura. Use javelin to uh, ramp up your damage by putting it on the the boss, but also while you're standing in it. I will switch this from hammer throw to shield throw because that should be shield throw, and then just continue to hit the enemies uh, with shield throw as fast as you can. Keep your javelin up uh, every time it goes on cooldown. Put it back up and stand in javelin as much as you can. Use unspec shield rush or um well shield rush is probably better than this or lunge either one for emergency situations to get out of boss attacks all right next up we have got gear blessings and idols so let's talk about the gear um the gear bonuses you want or the gear goals that you want cap resistance cap crit avoidance capped endurance three to four thousand percent health 50 to 60 armor mitigation if you get all of this uh, that's pre boss by the way. If you get all this, you're going to be very, very hard to kill. And once you actually start using shield throw, your arm mitigation is going to be like insane. It's, it's, it's crazy. 3,000 3, plus block effect. This is possible, this build, because of idols. 1,500% uh, block chance. 100% is going to be when you are using Bastion. 100% smite, uh, smite crit chance is very, very doable. Remember, you only need smite crit. You don't care about shield throws crit. It doesn't matter. Just smite. 60% plus throwing attack speed is very doable. And 500 plus mana also. Don't overdo your mana, or else you're actually going to take a net negative in damage, but 500 to 700 or so is about the sweet spot. Okay, as far as gear starting gear, we don't have to worry about too much. Um, yeah, there's actually not much at all to worry about here. You're just kind of building up a basic amount of things. Um, you can use Avarice or Tome for Life Leech, but you really don't need it because you're going to have the healing from javelin but if you want a more consistent like two sources you can do that i don't have it built in here but it's an option for you if you want it as far as advanced gear we're going to start to work towards getting you know we're going to try to get devotion here to get a lot more damage out of it make sure you have your adorned raya idols with chance to cast smite when hit with right if you don't have at least two of these don't try to run this build you should probably have three or four this build needs these idols to function you cannot play without it, so make sure that you have those going. Uh, keep, on, keep on look out for better and better versions of those, especially with better suffixes, but also better um, better proc chance. But the proc chance is actually the priority here. Let's get into the end game one. This is where it really starts to come together. We've got our smite, or we have devotion. We've got our bastion of honor. If you can get block effectiveness on that, amazing. As far as your helmet and your body armor. The big armor versions of these are amazing. In, uh, double mana prefixes are awesome. We want, again, we want a lot of mana, and that's an easy place to get a ton of it. Double health as well. Armor and shred effect on the seal if you can get it. We're going to run a crystal one of this for the extra mana that it provides. Spell crit is important here over crit because it rolls higher. The other prefix, lightning damage, spell damage are, are the best. Crit multi is also good, but not quite as good as those um, when you have a really well-designed, really well-geared build. So try to get lightning or spell if you can, but crit multi is okay. Chill and shock as the suffix is very important. And if you can get stun, chance, sealed, great. As far as your rings, you want probably one copper to help you cap. And then you can do lightning damage, crit strike, throwing attack speed is your primary here. But uh, most important of all, make sure you have the minus three throwing attack mana cost so that you can run zero mana. Once you're at zero mana, you're good. These are the easiest way to get it. So prioritize those over everything else. Then throwing attack speed, the crit chance, and lightning damage. Um, you're going to want to put crit avoidance here if you can to cap your crit avoidance with the blessing. As far as the gloves, more crit strike chance. Throwing attack speed, mana. We're gonna start, we're gonna be scaling health here. This is our armor shred source as well. So make sure you get armor shred. This is the best place to get it by far. It's gonna make a big difference on the build, uh, the damage of the build. Your boots, movement speed. We're running cold res boots here to help cap our resistances. Uh, take what you need, but that's probably gonna be the best choice. Armor, hybrid health, a little bit of CDR if you can get it. The relic, this is the, the smite spot. <clears throat> Try to get your smite as high as you can. Crit multi here is nice, but not super necessary. 
one resistance here. Frailty is very important here. Make sure you get your frailty. And then if you get the plus one in sigil seal, that's awesome. It'll help you out a little bit too. All right, Biss is going to be more of the same. It is just the, the same type of gear, better rolled. So not much really to cover here. If you've got the, the end game stuff going, you're just trying to get better versions of it. All right, let's talk about the blessings. So Grand Hunger of the Void, very important for the build. Gets you that spell leech. Not as important this build as, say, the Hammer Throw one, since you do get a lot of healing from Javelin, so you can run without it for a while, but you do want it eventually. Grand Survival of Might for your Crit Avoidance. Grand Mystery of the Deep for your Shred Lightning Resist. This is better than the Mana one. If you have well, if you have good gear, this is better than the Mana Blessing this slot. The Mana Blessing is good. This is better, so try to get this one. Block Effectiveness, very important for Bastion of Honor, so we definitely want that. Uh, Grand Body of Obsidian or Grand, uh, uh, excuse me, is, is a good, is, let me rephrase this. Grand Body of Obsidian is generally really good here. However, we get a ton of armor, so we're going to go Grand Embers of Immortality for the Endurance to make it easier to get our Endurance capped. Okay. Idols. Uh, Chance of Smite, super important. Can't run the build without it. That is your, that is your primary. That is your, your major objective. Try to get nines. Try to get four nines if you can. Suffixes on these are really good too. Block effectiveness, shred armor, uh, and health. Any of those are good. As far as your one by ones, whatever resistances you need. In this setup, we've got poison and void resistance and stun chance. If you need the other idol, you can go prefix for, for resistances. You can go prefix uh, mana or armor. Okay, let's go on to build scaling and endgame. So as far as build scaling damage. Throwing attack speed, really good. You see we put it on our gear a lot. It's going to allow us to apply a lot more smites and also build up more armor. Uh, mana for devotion, we want 500 plus, 500 and 700 max is the sweet spot. Don't go crazy on it, but definitely make sure to scale it. Attunement is good, but not great. It gives us damage and some mana, but the amount of mana is very low. So we'd rather have actual mana on our gear, not attunement. So attunement, fine. Mana, better. Crit strike chance, make sure to get this capped or close to it. Try to get it as close to capped as possible. It's going to be really good, especially with the amount of crit multi that we're going to get um, from some other sources. You're already going to start off with pretty good crit strike because you get 200% with holy precision. And of course, convictions are base crit in the smite, so it's pretty easy to cap this overall. Crit multi, holy precision, deep impact give us a lot of crit multi. So we don't need a ton on our gear, but we will put it somewhere if we can get it. Uh, Sigils of Hope gives us increased damage. That's just going to be an easy free, uh, free, um, a freebie, a free increase of, of, of damage uh, that we're just going to have just from setting up our, our, whole, our whole build. Uh, increased damage is good. The biggest place you're probably going to get it from is your Crystal Wand with your spell damage or lightning damage. Level of Smite is very important. Make sure to get this on your Relic. And we talked about Grand Mysteries of the Deep being really good. Um, it does add with Shock, and we want both. Armor Shred, also really good. Get that on your gloves. As far as defense, Armor Clad is an easy take. Block Chance, we want some, but Bastion is going to take care of most of it. However, there are still some places where we can get Block Chance and get value out of it. Block Effectiveness is very important. We want to get the Grand Bones of Eternity Blessing. We're also going to try to put some on our idols. Endurance is very important. We want to get to 60%, especially thanks to Iron Sigils, which gives us additional Endurance Threshold, makes it even more valuable. Strength is good for armor but that's about all it does so we'll get some to the passive tree don't put it on your gear intentionally uh, armor mitigation we're going to get a ton of armor from this build uh, it's going to be very easy to get a lot of armor because of the shield throw node so we're going to be able to get up to quite a bit of it um, as far as health goes we can stack a lot of health and we're going to want to do that on our gear for sure leech we're going to use grand wrath is not grand wrath ray we're going to use the uh, the spell one not the throwing one and then we also have javelin for healing i will fix that and chill and frailty are both going to be on your gear as well make sure to get these chill on your weapon frailty on your relic preferably those are going to be huge bonuses to uh, damage reduction thanks to the enemy doing less damage and then we're going to want to have cleanse if we can get it as well to, especially to help with dots the last thing to cover are the recommended end game activities this is fine on all it will be better on some. Its best case use is Monolith and Arena. It's very good in the Monolith because of its clear. The only thing it's not 
ideal for is bosses in the monolith but the reality is if you're a really good clear and not as good at bossing your overall speed and efficiency is higher because you spend a lot more time in the echoes that are not bosses than on bossing that means this is very good at it. it's also got very good damage or excuse me, very good defense uh so it's not going to have a lot of trouble with any of the um any of the the, the difficulty scaling that happens in monolith as far as dungeons it's okay here but the reality is the low damage makes boss fights longer which means that you'll have more time to screw up to make a mistake which makes them more challenging than builds that can just kind of blow them up so this is not the best dungeon farmer uh you're usually better off with a very high single target damage build but this can absolutely do the tier 4 dungeons so you don't have to avoid it because you can't get through them you can definitely do them with this build especially with its high tankiness as far as arena it's actually very good for arena um because it has it has really good range it has really good defenses this is a solid choice for pushing arena it's not one of the absolute best builds but it's a very good choice if you want to play uh, arena with a with a paladin build this is definitely one of the best options that you will have so definitely consider this one when you're trying to decide if you want to push the arena with the new leaderboards that are up uh this patch all right that is everything except for the loot filter which we have right here it is customized for this build so please do go ahead and grab that and use it to maximize the gear on your build all right thank you so much for watching i hope you have a great time with this build a great time in last epoch and i will see you all again real soon